Hello. Okay, so today I'm doing a phone screen repair. I don't normally do phone screen repair, but hey, I have to do sometime, right? So this is the iPhone 5S. Uh, I'm gonna clearly you can see the screen is pretty fucked up, even though it was in an auto box. So I'm kind of surprised that um, I guess auto box doesn't really protect your phone that well. It really needs a tempered glass, which you didn't have. So as you can see, it's um. Nothing works on this one. Touch, screen, nothing. And also, I'm filming this with a headset that I made for with a camera mounting headset. So let me know how you guys think about it. Um, it's kind of like a GoPro style uh, headset, but um, as you can see from the reflection, it's mounted to my headgear. Okay. It's kind of shaky, I think, but you get you do get the first view from the way I look at it, uh, from the camera. So let me see if I can adjust the angle a little bit so you see exactly what I'm looking at there. So when I'm looking down on the phone, um, you can get the same angle I'm viewing. This way, I don't have to uh, pause and then point the camera to the angle that I am looking in and impair the entire process making it really nice fun so I am unscrewing this even though you really should turn off the phone if you can in this case I don't think I can because this touch screen is so short I guess I could try if um maybe there's a way to do this so if I so yeah this touch screen is totally shot there's no way to turn it off um, okay, so I'm gonna use the suction cup thing because the screen is relatively intact. It's not, it's cracked up there, not down here. So I can use this uh, suction cup. Okay, it's a little bit image you can see as I put the suction cup on, but then I couldn't really slide it at all. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this up. This is really designed just for this. Um, there is a notice that there is a little ribbon cable connect to the home button that you don't want to rip apart. This is a five iPhone five S. So you see that little cable, and because this tool has spring inside, so it's actually very hard for you to go overboard and hence damage the phone, which makes this tool perfect for um, opening screen like this, and this is very easy to do. Okay, so I want to disconnect this ribbon cable from the phone, but um, you know, this one looking like I wonder if this one was worked at it before. I'm gonna use the screwdriver and trying to get to the There we go. So you disconnect the ribbon cable here. It's very important. You don't want to damage this because you need this part to transplant to the new screen. This cover, on the other hand, it's um, it's nah, it's questionable if you want to keep it. But that's up to you. You're doing this repair on your own phone. And before you disconnect those connectors under this screws and then heat shield. It's very important to get the battery out first because this phone, as you recall, was not properly turned off. So I need to magnetize my um, screwdriver first. By the way, this magnet is really strong, like, like really strong. So this is what I like to use for any kind of repair work. And just get my cable out of the way. There we go. So I can't really lose screws from using this magnet. But you do want to get a uh, magnetic screw chart. We saw on our website. You can even just print a PDF copy of it um, to remember where the screws is at when you take them out. And because iPhone makes screws in different sizes now, and when you put them in the wrong position, you can strip down the board. That's very dangerous. And okay, so looking at this battery, I don't know if you can see this without zooming in too much. There's a lot of um, 
filters and capacitors down there next to the connector. You don't want to um, tear those out when you use your finger down. So just be careful with your fingernails when you disconnect it. Okay, so now the battery is disconnected. You can do pretty much what you want on the phone. You can't really damage it anymore. Uh, there's no electric current running through it. And as I told you before, this it's a very um, easy to lose screw if you're not careful. And it's, it's handy to have a magnetic screw chart, which unfortunately I don't have one with me right now. And having a magnetic mat surface to work on. Okay. Just keep the screws in organized fashions. No, we don't lose them. So I really don't do these repair too often. Uh, the last time I had to do this is because my phone broke. Uh, I had to change the screen myself. I usually just do the, uh, the soldering on the larger board. I don't really do the phone screens. Because it was just too competitive in that market. There's not enough um, customers that want the service. Okay, there we go. So you take these. Well, I'm good at this. I'm taking the connector off one by one. I guess I only need to do the screen. Well, I don't even need to do the rest of the board. And since this screen is going to the trash can anyway, I just need to be careful not to damage any of this, these connectors, which is exactly what I'm good at because I'm actually fixed these um, FPC connectors and soldering them. So I'm very good at taking these FPC connectors out without damaging them. And or put the uh, fix the one that's already damaged. Okay, so the headset I have the only downside is that it gets uncomfortable and sweaty. Um, so I need to work on that. So my hair gets in my face. Okay. So now this is the part that you we want to transfer. This is a new screen, the iPhone Fire's screen. Uh, this is the old one. So what you want the goal of the object is to transplant everything, all every single little tiny screws. Um, I'm gonna walk on the bottom part first, I guess. Just take everything out. Um, the screwdriver is not up for the job, I don't think. Okay. This screw, you want to be careful because um, it has. Let me see. I'm not sure if you can see. Uh, it has a little grounding pad on it. And you really want to be careful because it's this home button, you only have one. If you mess this up, you wouldn't be able to get the finger to touch function to work. Uh, so I, I know that Apple now allowed the party home button, so thank God. So if you do break this by any chance, uh, you have a recourse. But if you can, it's best to preserve this home button at all costs because it's such a delicate part. You don't want to break it. Okay, so those are not too bad. Um, and immediately, I was recommend to put the screws back on. This is um. You don't want to wait before you forget, like where these placements is at. Here we go. Or you can get a screw mat that shows you where the position so that, that helps too. Okay, and you don't want these screws too tight. I'm not sure if you can see me. Um, you know, check the monitor to see if you can see. Okay, you don't want these screws too tight because um, if it's too tight, the home button won't work properly. So you want to just, uh, just a little bit loose. And you want to make sure you have the right size screws going in. And not too tight. And you can check from the other side, the home button is working properly and from looking at it, it, it's perfect it's nothing wrong with this, okay? so and also careful with this ribbon cable, like I said, it's very delicate and you can weight the screws, I guess um, yeah, wait for it okay, so actually this good yeah, I'm, just, I'm gonna wait for the screws until I put this um, metal shell back. And this metal shell comes with the water, water paper sensor. So there's a bunch of screws on the sides, two on this side. 
and I guess two on the other. I know this repair is supposed to be really easy compared to four soldering repair. It's just I really don't do too many of these since there's no demand for it. But then I'm I'm started doing some local repairs. It's it's really hard to get people to send in their phone nowadays to do these kind of simple repairs. Um, only specialized repair people are willing to mail out their phone to me. But this is a local phone, so. Okay, uh, blah blah blah, this bunch of connected up here. I really think somebody worked on this before. It looks like it was worked on. I don't know, what do you think? Okay, let's take the camera off. That's a long screw on the top. I actually have no idea if you can see this video as I'm doing this because my camera is on top of my head. So let me know how the video comes out and I'll do more uh, other kind of repair with this camera on my head. Okay. So there's, there's one more screw here. Pretty sure this screw is just holding stuff in place. It doesn't really do anything. Other than that. Okay, so now this metal shell comes off. And for some reason, this part is taped onto the metal shell. I think the best thing to do is to leave it alone. This looks like some kind of. I'm sure it's just ground. It looks like a ground grounding pad. All right. So this is the camera. Comes with, with the microphone. And all this little good stuff. Um. This I guess a tweezer will help in this case because you want to get this off. And I think there's some um, sticky adhesive on this side, as you can see. This is um. This is, I think this is the microphone, or oh, this is the microphone. Uh, that's the microphone, and this is, this is the proximal sensor, sensor here, the dials, and this is the camera. So you don't want to get those part dirty, let's put this aside, and it's actually not that hard, this whole process is pretty easy. Okay, so for my new screen, I don't have this little plastic piece. I think they use super glue or some kind of glue for it. Um, I'm just gonna transfer it here with no glue. Because I don't think it's a good idea to put super glue on this part. It will frog up the camera as you can see here. And I do have a rubber boot here from the new screen, even though it's not that rubbery, doesn't look like. Alright, and that's it, that's the rest of the phone. Oh, so this is why people do this repair. It's just so easy. This I haven't even started doing a repair it feels like I'm almost done. Um Alright, maybe I should do more of these repairs. This is not, not the same as the uh, iPhone 6, because iPhone 6, as I recall, this, it's a pain in the ass um, way to place your home button ribbon cable. <sighs> because... It's just, you have to tear it out through the board. Anyway, so if, for this iPhone 5S, um, I might need that super glue. I really don't want to use a super glue. Well, some kind of silicone based glue would do it. Okay, so that, that that's fine. Camera went in. Uh, you want to put in the little microphones first into the rubber boot and make sure this uh, contact is done, otherwise it won't work. Then you can replace the whole face shield back onto the phone. Okay, I can see the merit on uh, people buying these and doing them, so I really don't think you need to send this out to people to do repairs. You could just... With these simple two I have set up, especially, well, plus or minus the magnet mat, it's up to you. Um, you do need a tweezer and a freaking screwdriver. You can do this at home, I mean, I don't see anything special. You don't need, you don't need a microscope for this, you don't need um, special... To, I think Apple is making this way too easy 
for someone to do repair. They probably did this because um, I think there's a design change since iPhone 5, uh, 4 and 4S to 5 and 5S. They make it so the Apple Care people can do this repair. I don't know if the Apple Care people can actually do the repair because uh, as we know, mostly Apple Care, not all of them, but most of the Apple Care, Apple, Apple geniuses, they not that genius. So questionable. I don't know. Not sure. Okay. So this part, I think it goes on top of, hold on, there we go, so this screw goes on top of here, it goes down, You want this grounding pad to have contact here. I'm assuming if this contact is not right, it probably won't work right. So be careful there. And see, where's the other two screws are left? Here. Okay. So these four screws, I guess they're interchangeable. It's fine if you mix them. Ah. This is why you have this magnet. So when you drop it, you don't lose any of these screws. And you want to work right in the middle of it, because otherwise it, when it does drop, it can fly outside, and it kind of lose the entire point having this magnet. But as you can see, if you have a really tiny screw dropping high level, it will not bounce. It will just stick where it is. And it doesn't matter what, what object, big object, it stays. You see how strong this is? I can, I can bounce on this. And it wouldn't to go anywhere. It's actually quite difficult to pull it off once you put something on. It's a big magnet. It's nothing like the commercial um, screw mat you have on the market. This thing is just... It's a monster magnet. Alright, so that's pretty it. Pretty much it. There's not much to it. Huh, boring. Uh, I was expecting something else. Okay, putting the screen back. Um, I think I forgot to put this, take this tape off. I don't think it makes a difference. I guess I'll just stay inside. The screen can stay with a nice shiny plastic. Too late. <laughs> I don't want to get all the screws off. Okay, putting the connector back, this is the tricky part. I think most repair people messed up here. You need to actually see this connector, especially the new iPhone 6. I don't know about 5S. It's probably okay, you can get away with 5S. Because these connectors are not that long. Um, you need to actually see these connectors go in on the right spot, especially the 6 and 6S, the touch connector. Good lord, those connectors are long. Um, when the connect FPC connector gets that long, you can't just feel and then feel the click. You actually need to see, see the connector goes in, like visual, visual confirmation. So I can get away with this one because the connector here is so small. So we can do that. And I think that's it. Camera goes in. This stays in. You need to tape this part. Don't want it, don't let it come off. And I don't really like to put this thing in, but because this is not my phone, um, and I'm doing this video, otherwise I probably won't put this shell on. Reason being, um, this face shell doesn't do anything. It's just just putting the connector in place. But in doing so, it actually causes strain and damage the connectors. And also, if you tie these screws too too tight or using the wrong size, it will break this phone. So I really think this is here just to make the whole job more difficult and Apple can potentially make it harder to do the repair. It doesn't really protect anything because everything else is shielded and there's no sensitive component under this shield. So, I don't know. I, what if? <laughs> it's just there to make things go bad, possibly. Same thing with this battery connector. Like I don't see the point putting this back, but I'm doing it for you guys.
on the video. I, I don't like actual unnecessary part in my repairs. It's just, it just has no function. It doesn't belong. I know that some people is like professionals, they're crazy, they, they say like everything has to be perfect, everything has to go in, and then, then when they repair it's like almost like oh everything has to go in, otherwise it's not the same, it's not original, those, those people are crazy. They have a, they have a personality um, flawed, I think, or maybe I have one because I, I just want it to work, I don't really care how it works, it just it needs to work. If it doesn't work, no go. Okay, so this I can see is a pain in the butt. Uh, probably should put this connector in first before I do the other ones, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so I, I'm not sure if you can see from the camera. Okay, there, I, I'm checking the camera for you. This is a pain in the butt, but it's doable. You can still feel it and click it. Any good tactile sensation? I think that's in. I'm not entirely sure if I can and want to put this little thing back. I'm gonna try just for fun for the video. There we go, it went back in. I don't I'm not happy about it because I don't like to put stuff back. That's stupid. Okay. Okay, so everything is in, everything works, uh, I think. So let's test it before we. I'm just gonna close it, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. Unless I knit the ribbon cable in some way because of putting those stupid face shields in. I think there's no problem there. Okay. Putting everything in, click, click, click. So you wanna put these three um, taps up, slide it in, and then you wanna press on the side, it will just clip in on its own once you do that and finally you click in the bottom okay and final moment turn on the phone before we screw the final screw in uh, i'm gonna keep this thing on just so the customer can have a brand new screen and then get do whatever you want you put this um temper glass on it which i recommend highly of and i'm gonna put these screws in I also think these screws are kind of redundant. Don't need them. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, they 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 necessary. It's just like they making it into a pentalobe shape. Like, why? If you want to make this hard to open, make it into a regular Phillips screw. Ah, uh, as you can see, some stupid lines on the screen. I think it's because of that face shield. Let me go re remove that. Stupid. Or maybe it could be the screen. I don't know if the screen is good actually. It's been sitting for a while. Okay, I'm gonna go remove that down face shield. It's killing me. Here we go. This is why I don't like to put parts that's unnecessary in because it makes the whole job just a lot more unnecessary. Take this part, I gotta redo it. It's really hard. Get off. Okay, let's try this again. This makes me miss soldering. Okay, get the battery off. So the lines you saw, it's probably from the touch connector. I need to make sure the touch connector is actually down. So this time, I'm gonna do it without this annoying uh, shielding. Like I say, it's just there, doing absolutely nothing, making this job nearly impossible. Okay, I need to make sure. See, the touch connector is loose. This is why we saw what we saw. Um, the trick is to 
we do it. And just because of that face shield making you impossible to see what you're doing, this is why this happened. And I hope I didn't short anything because this connector was loose. So you, you see, you see how annoying this is? Just don't use this. Get rid of it. Do what I do. Don't have this. Piece of crap. And if you say anything otherwise, I don't care. I this thing bad for you. Alright, now I'm gonna turn it on and you're gonna see it works. Oh wait, wait, wait. Let me just put this connector back as well. Since I'm already at it. God, I hate this connector. Although it is a really small connector, the chances of you mess it up is not as high as the long connector. There we go. Okay, it better work this time. There we go. Nothing on the screen so far. I'm taking this off because we already put the suction cup on, so it's too late. Da, 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 da. Before I put it back in, I just noticed this camera thing fold off. So I'm gonna do something crazy and try to slide it back. There. This is probably not a good idea. But I wanna see if this works. Okay, great. See, this is screen, how clear the screen is. It's perfect. And the touch works. Everything works. This guy has a really long password. I'm gonna turn it off for now. Just so I can put that little camera thing in. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off for now and put a little camera thing in. I do have a tweezer. And then it goes in, stays. Because I want to make sure. Okay, this is the catch 22. Because if I want to make sure the connector goes in, this goes in. Alright, so the touch connector doesn't want to stay in. Um, you need to be very careful when you do this. So, this is the part I never experienced because I don't do enough of these phone repairs. This connector, it's really easy to come off, and when it does come off, it does weird images. You need to make sure to stay in, and I wonder if there's a better way aside from putting that annoying fish shield thing in incorrectly. Alright, so all these connectors are in, assuming there's no damage on the ribbon cable. It's Touch connectors fully plug in. I'm gonna make sure on that. Battery goes in. I'm gonna do it very carefully. Notice how I press down on the screen without actually making a tilt. And in retrospective, this connector is actually not that bad. This little teeny touch button one. It's doable. It's not terrible. And I'm not gonna mess with the ribbon cable anymore. Okay. Now everything's in, turn it on, final result. Okay, this is a horrible instruction, I forgot to put this thing, I was wondering what this is. Why is it standing out here? Ah, fine, so I'll have to do this again. I guess this is a good video for those of you who doesn't do this very often. And I don't know how I forgot that, that looks like a microphone actually. Yeah, or a speaker. This is a speaker. Oh, I do want to see if the screen has any lines. So there's no lines. And... No lines. So, good! So the screen's fine. It was really just a uh, um, touch ribbon cable 
and uh, a PC connector was loose. So you get to see me do it those three times again. Clearly, I'm not I'm not good at this. I don't do this very often. I guess I'll be, get, be getting better after all those times. Um, all this practice. Okay. So a little magnetism on this it comes off. And again, very important. Once you get the battery unplugged, you do whatever hell you want with this phone. I won't mind. It won't damage anything. Engineer very careful with your fingertip. Um, you have to actually feel the FPC connector. Remember, it's a 90 degree FPC connector, so it goes upward. And this touch connector really gives people a lot of problems. It's giving me a lot of problems right now. It's because it just falls off so easily. Alright, so this is what I'm missing. Um, and you get a camera back in, and obviously this is... It needs that. This is why my camera is not secured. <laughs> this ball is not plugged in. I was wondering what, what, what the four dot was going like. That's kind of silly of me not forgot to put this in. Okay, I, I take it back. This is just as annoying as doing a soldering repair. I probably won't enjoy the soldering repair a lot more. Um, this is kind of boring. Not in a good way. It's just a lot of repetitive, silly thing. If you do this every day and then do more than one, I suppose you can cut down the time to maybe like five minutes. Or less probably, because this whole thing is not much to it. It's just remember, don't don't put that piece of crap back. Like this is this is bad for you. And it's very important to have the this connector plug in correctly and don't just jam on it otherwise this connector will get messed up and then this one will pretty much be uh kind of in trouble and then you send it to me and i'll solder you a new connector then you can use it again but other than that um that's not a good thing good thing for me i get i get a do the fpc connector but this connector breaks so easily and if it when it does break and you don't plug it in right, I don't know if I'm plugging it right in this one. Doesn't feel like it. I'm not sure. If I'm plugging it right the last time. I can hear a complete click. But this time I'm not so sure. Uh, this looks okay. It looks alright. So I'm gonna go buy it. These two are easy because they were designed to plug in right away. The long one, the longer the FPC connector, the harder it is to do. It's almost impossible to do it right. Okay, this is plug in. This is my third try. I have some doubts on how it was plugged in, but we will see. It wasn't this hard last time I did this. I think I did a terrible job on this one. Probably because there's a camera on my head. Um, makes it not as easy. Okay. I hope I hope when I just do that, I didn't mess up the connectors because that would really suck. I don't want to do this again. Come on, give me something to work with. So to recap. Nope, I did something. We got, we lost touch. Frack. Okay, no touch. No, there's touch. I'm confused. Never mind, got touch back, but then I lost the freaking home button. Alright, uh, whatever. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make sure the touch is good because I, I moved that screen a little bit when I put it in. So there's trick to it. You just, you want to make sure the screen is. Aligned properly before you close and make sure the freaking connectors are close. Very important. And don't play with the FPC connector too much, um, especially when the power, power plug is still plugged in with the battery. Even though the phone is off, it's still a danger. It's better if the phone is off, but if the phone is on, that's even worse. 
even if it's all plugged in, that's that's a danger in there. Alright, I'm pretty pretty convinced this time it's good. So I'm closing it. Turning it on. Not gonna wait. I'm just gonna go the button and put this in. So I get to keep this pretty beat up screen as a souvenir. Um, yeah, this thing is totally wasted because the, the screen is worthless and the LCD is toast. It cracked. I don't know why it cracked. This is cracked somewhere and um, the whole thing just lines on it. And. Hold on. Okay, so the touch screen works, every single key works. If I keep playing with it, it's gonna lock itself soon enough, so I'm gonna do that anyway. Good, so this is perfect. After many tries. So I'm gonna upload this video as a blunder video and I feel a little bit embarrassed, but not really. I don't really do this repair, you know? Like, I don't really think this is repair. This is kind of just plugging parts. There's no... There's no soldering. <laughs> there's no creativity and, and skills. It's just... Skills. It's It has skills, I'm sorry. It's like... It's, um... It's experience, I guess. Because, um... You, again, to do this... The only thing you need to remember, the most important thing, is that freaking touch FPC connector. You don't do that connector right, you're plugging them wrong, or whatever, you look at the funny, you're gonna have lines, and you're gonna have Z-bar lines, you're gonna have some all sorts of weird shit, because of that connector. Make sure it's plugged in, and don't put too much force on it, because that can definitely damage the connector, and then you will fuck out your phone, and which is okay, because you can always send it to me, I'll fix the connector for you, but... I, I'll rather you don't fuck the connector in the first place. I don't know. I I I, I have um. It's um conflict of interest. So don't don't. I don't know. I have conflict of interest. Um. So yeah, don't fuck up that connector. Basically. Okay. Thank you for watching. This is my blunder video. I think I did this phone repair almost like three times by the amount of time I spent. So I guess about about ten minutes or under, you should be able to do this repair on your own. If you don't do what I did, like going back and forth, but then if you don't put this in back in, you save so much time. Like but that's five minutes right there. In my case, it's twenty minutes. Okay, thank you for watching, and have a good one. Peace out.